This is the Map Scout Challenge brought to you by OnX, where we examine the map, assess features like terrain, habitat, and access, then go out and rip it apart in person. And right now we're going to show you the results, no holds barred, so that next time you go to public land, you have the confidence to scout, hunt, and kill whatever you're after. <laughs> what is happening everybody it is another map scout challenge we are in southeastern missouri headed to the mark twain national forest that is one to three million acres three million acres of public national forest public land hunting area that you can go access today we're going to go check out some of that it's going to be a lot of uh, big woods type stuff a lot of ridges we're also going to get into some river bottoms and stuff like that we're going to be looking for some deer looking for some turkeys maybe some bears maybe some pigs i've even heard a rumor of the elusive wapiti elusive american elk have been reintroduced to Mark Twain National Forest, so might even get some of those on trail camera or something. But yeah, we're gonna hang some trail cameras while we're here and hopefully find some awesome stuff to show y'all. So let's go to the map and we will show you where we are headed. So ladies, about to creep out with you film. <laughs> <laughs> all right so one of the things you got to make sure you do uh when you're going to head into like one of these big national forests or whatever is normally there's not great cell phone service at all so we actually just went inside this here county country and got us some dried fruits so now i'm going to save this map so i can use it offline while we're in here um scout i'm going to do the narrow one because i really want to see some good detail while we're in there I'm gonna make sure it's grabbing the most national forest as possible. Five miles wide on the map dot that we're wanting to go to. I'm gonna download that over my cell phone network. If you uh, if you have Wi-Fi at home, you can do this before you leave home. I don't have Wi-Fi, so I usually just do it over my network. I got unlimited data, so you can just use it that way. But usually, if you've got good service, it only takes two or three minutes to download a decent sized map. So, super handy tool whenever you're going back way deep. <laughs> you are a creeper. All right, Mark Twain National Forest, three million and something acres, giant piece of property. Mm. Uh, there's quadrants all over the state. We're gonna stick to the southern spot down here. That's still gonna be somewhere around 400,000 acres, I think. Uh, they're kind of split up into different counties, so it's kind of hard to tell. But that's, I mean, that's almost 100,000 acres right there. Uh, first plot first spot that I really like is this spot right here it's on a bend in the river mm -hmm. it's on a bend in the river and there's big ridges right here that feed down to the river and this is the one place in the whole river that there's like a CRP fallow field down at the bottom and it just so happens it's on a big bend which is a place bucks like to bed you zoom in real tight on this detailed map trail city mm -hmm. trails everywhere and and you can tell a lot of those trails are going east and west well, why are they doing that there's a band of timber down here around the river yeah maybe for water maybe there's good food sources over here maybe they like to the shade in the evenings bedding or they're, they're bedding. On the wind. yeah and they're they're definitely probably bedding over there near the river and then you know it's just two different habitat types habitat types that they're transitioning back and forth between mm -hmm. one of the nice things i like about this place is that yeah, it's kind of a little bit close to this like little forest service road right here, whatever that is. Uh, but you got to take a long winding road to get there. It's way far from the highway. And what I really like about this, especially on On X, is it has um, like I've got this map layer turned on. I think it's in the road and trails map layers that you can click these forest service roads on you. The country they show up in purple, and it tells you like what type of road it is. This one's road open to legal highway legal vehicles all year long. Some of them will say only open to 50 inches or narrower, and some of them will have dates and stuff that you can uh, that you can't use it as well. So, I mean, we're looking at this. If you look at that one mile right there, one, two, three, four, five, five-ish miles from the highway. That's a long haul down a two track, mm -hmm. okay? So I think that's gonna be a really good spot. We'll go further west over here. No purple roads at all, right? Mm -hmm. Trails. 
that means that this is a roadless area right here with nothing but trails through it. Talk about a place the deer can get old, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's gonna be a tough push for us to be able to scout two miles back in here on foot right now. So I think that since it's summertime and we're scouting, that you could go to this map dot right here. See, if you look, this is all a bunch of ridges and stuff, okay? And this is the one place those all kind of make a bowl. Mm -hmm. All right, right around this spot right here. Maybe deer are spending time down in here because the food's a little bit different in the summertime. Down in the bottom of this big bowl. It's not far from the highway at all, but it's not near a, a pull-in. So it's kind of an overlooked spot. Go in there, scout that, maybe even hang a camera, and then you'll know that whatever big bucks you have right there, if they disappear in the season, you can just push back further into this big roadless area and find that big buck or maybe even other big bucks hanging out back here in all those ridges. Or he might stay there all season. You can kill him right there next to the road and drag him out. So either way, I like those two spots a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll start with those and see where we get. Cool. Oh, we just saw a, a yearling in the ditch. And I tried to yelp her, and she wouldn't stop. So I guess they don't like that up here. All right. No, go. Did your truck just turn off? <laughs> What's going on? Maybe it's something to do for me letting it go backwards while in drive. Okay, so there's trail. Kind of got the head of a ditch, sort of right there. It's kind of a secondary side part of a ditch. I mean, I guess you got a ditch that comes up right there. It comes down to there, but it's almost like it's up on the hill. It's kind of weird. Like the saddle's actually on the other side of this little hill right here. We'll see if there's another, uh, if there's a trail right up there in that little saddle too. Okay, so we made it to where we're gonna park the truck. It's actually a little bit before we thought we were going to. As you can see, we're still plenty good and on public land. So I'm gonna mark the truck right where we parked it here. Map tools at waypoint truck. Save that. Now, as you see behind me, and you see on the map here, still plenty of public land around us. That's a posted sign on public land. According to our map on our X, which they double checked, this is still public land. It's still National Forest on the other side of the, of the sign right here. So we feel plenty comfortable going through this, making sure we stay on the public land, on the, the public side of the private boundary. So I'm going to go ahead and mark this gate because it's frustrating, but it would be good to know that that's there. Um, whenever you do want to come back, say you want to come in here and hunt, or it's in the dark, and like, what the heck? What's going on with this gate? So hear a vehicle coming. I'm going to mark that. Add photo. Take photo. Boom. <laughs> he's, not, he's not going to show us the real big ones. It's just dry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we venture up there a good bit. Uh, Area called Beaver's Bend. I don't know if you remember where that is. Yeah, that's a good buck, man. Wow. wow. Look at <laughs> Chocolate horns, too. That's cool. Yeah. Man. Time for that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's a good buck, though, man. Oh, yeah. And, y'all, if I come for a trip, I'm probably shooting that for sure. Yeah. You know? Like, we're at seven How are you hunting them? The are you just, just walking through the woods, or how are you hunting them? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Y'all can't bait here? No bait? Yeah. Can't in Arkansas. Just yeah. 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 So, do you uh, try to hunt like saddles in the ridges and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. It's clear cut. You know, Chad at Exodus talks about clear cuts in the big timber all the time. That's where he's hunting. He's finding those clear cuts way back in. I know this is on a somewhat maintained road because Forest Service has been in here, but we're still a good ways from pavement, you know? Kind of rubs around. Well, there are ticks here for sure. Uh, if you know me, 
You know I like a place where there's an old wooden deer stand. And we've got one right over here, actually, by this pond. And then, if you, I mean, you can probably tell, but there are some perennial rut-raging rubs here. So, pretty much seems like anywhere there's a wrist-sized evergreen, there's a rub. So this is a little bit of a contrast as to what we've done on some of these other properties this spring so far, where we're seeing a lot of rubs. So that's a good sign. We're gonna hop off down here. Uh, we feel like we're gonna be in a good spot when we kind of end up at the end game down here. And there's a lot of bugs right now. So we're probably gonna kind of uh, brush over a lot of this stuff and hit anything on the way back that is pertinent to what happens down there. So let's run. Well, it's summertime. <laughs> We're pretty hot and sweaty. Uh, we just kind of lost a lot of elevation off the end of that ridge and came down here. And this is a lot marshier than I expected, which isn't a bad thing at all. Actually, it makes me really excited because we're actually on like an island of timber that juts out into this marsh, higher ground than some of the stuff back here behind us and back over here to the south of us. And it gets even higher still right back here on the edge of the timber. And we found a decent amount of tracks and whatnot. And then this is a, a dead fawn from a couple weeks ago. So um, you know that the does and fawns are bedding in this, at least in the summertime. Maybe bucks too, but maybe we push out into one of these other islands that are out here in the middle of the marsh and maybe that's where we find the bucks at. Uh, just busted a deer off this point, bedded off this point. I only saw a flash. And it's too thick to even see it, but I think it went off over that way. And you can't hear because of the, all the boats on the river. But we'll go back here and see if we can find a bed right here under these trees. There's a night bed. Little pasture. KC's been taking us on this little kind of the map scouting session here, basically. What we ended up doing was we we're on an island over here. Um, and it kind of juts out to a point which uh, comes closest to a point on the end of this island that we're kind of on right here When I say island, I'm talking about a place that doesn't typically flood when the water's up from the river uh, So they can rely on it as consistent bedding um, The thing is when you get to the south, it's just a little bit harder than it is not far north of here So we're having a little bit of a difficulty finding a spot. We feel real good putting a camera uh, there's definitely enough sign on that other island where it pinches down through between that swamp and the ridge and everything else there's some trails coming out all the way out to that point i mean that's definitely what they're doing we could justify putting a camera there for sure but i think we're going to keep on scouting our way back around through this islands and maybe back up the ridge where we saw a lot more rut sign <laughs> Really dark. Don't don't do it. Pretty boy. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's trying to eat me. He's smart. He Tie himself in a knot. Twitching his tail. It's a pretty snake right there. If you come closer, we can get some good footage of him. <laughs> That's why I got the zoom lens. <laughs> and when you first picked it up and how fat he was, I was like, oh, what's yeah. he I doing? I saw his tail and said, man, it's fat. Is that a cotton mouth? And then I looked at the colors like, there's no way. Here we go. Go ahead. Oh, Ooh. you're just going to get mad. It's crazy how dark he is. That's how docile they are. Just want him to strike it. Now if you'll go on, Tyler can get through here. I'm just gonna rattlesnake this leaf right here. <laughs> There's a bed right there. By itself too, so I mean you kinda wanna think it's a buck. Let's go get it just in case. Not a lot of buck sign around it, so who knows? There's a secondary trail going out right there though. Um, by itself, right? So, kind of makes you want to think it's a buck bed. I'm going to mark it. 
when you know we're about 80 yards south oh no we're <laughs> look at that dot i put in texas <laughs> we're 20 yards south of it <laughs> I thought you were pointing at the weird snail right here. It's cool. Man, I didn't look right there. You can still see it still there. Like they're still coming by here, I think. Be a place to put a camera. Might have. It's true. It's a good point. Look for some big hands. It's a big old bed. It is. It's tough to say. I'm gonna mark it on the map though. All right, so Tyler's made a good point that something that we do is uh, a lot of times we mark sign because it really helps us put the big picture together. And maybe like just walking around, you have a real tough time understanding what's going on in the, in the area with deer. But now I can look at my map and I kind of got an idea of what's going on. And I mean, even just at this, you got that scrape down there on the edge of this lane, and you got two beds, and the beds are kind of central in this finger. So you can almost imagine you're gonna find more beds along this finger as we keep going. This is a big bed. Um, we don't know if there's hogs in this area or not. Could be that, but there's just one. And there's no mud or anything, and there's a little browse in there. So it really makes me wanna think that this is a buck bed. I don't know, keep walking, see what we can figure out. What do you think? Big picture, right? Big ridges. We're kind of at the very tip of a big ridge, which kind of in general implies deer travel around the horn of it. And they're gonna travel down the sides and maybe even down the top. It's pretty steep, but at least down the sides. It even looks like a trail coming off of that creek bank right there, you see mm -hmm. it? Um, this is a road cuts through between these two openings that you can see on the map right there mm -hmm. marsh to the south and there's deer using the creek bottom right there if you can call it that the drainage mm -hmm. and the trail the road that we're on now we found more deer sign you could say out on the island but those deer aren't going to stay out there all year long sure. This is like just kind of a classic spot to hang a camera, right? Where you've got really two main things crossing right here, a good open spot, and you've got this giant hill right here behind you to kind of funnel deer. So I think it's a good spot, even if it's not the, maybe we're not gonna catch. It's a DMA. Yeah. It's not, the old it's deer not movement you area. don't have a whole lot of faith in it, but you know that there, you're gonna get something on it. Yeah, it's not like, if we were trying to maybe uh, get a buck to shoot in the next three days, maybe not hang a camera here but since we know this thing's gonna sit like three weeks at least sooner or later you would imagine that a decent deer is gonna walk through this area right mm -hmm. here and assuming that you know there's this deer sign out here that we found there probably would be that kind of deer sign in this thicker timber too mm -hmm. and this is the adjoining thing that adjoins the ridge yeah to, there's a lot of edge right here yeah. if you look at the ridge you look at the two openings mm -hmm. and this creek or drainage right here yeah. There's a lot of edge, man. Throw it to the, um, yeah, you can see the creek uh -huh. right there. So I think it's a good spot. I think this is where we should hang the camera. It's good. It's, uh, at this point, we just don't really want to go back to where we were because yeah. it is, uh, we've seen snakes, bugs, mm -hmm. ticks. We're kind of ready to get uh, to Illinois and take some pictures of some big deer. Well, you know, too, like, it would be great to hang this thing over a bed and get a picture of a buck in a bed. But really, like if you imagine this as a funnel or like an hourglass, like the most sand is going to pass through the tiny spot on an hourglass, mm -hmm. you know? So sooner or later, I think most of the deer that are using those islands out there in that marsh are mm -hmm. gonna pass right through here. Yeah, well that's another thing is if a buck's bedding in there in the summertime, there's a chance he's not bedding there when the seasons change a little bit. Yeah, I mean, know? it comes time to start rubbing the velvet off, you know, early October, he's gonna probably yeah. 
run up through there and that's why scouting on the way out checking out those secondary ridges and fingers and stuff on that ridge is going to be pretty important mm -hmm. to see you know where you set up you get him on camera down here but you set up to hunt him up there yeah yeah so we're sitting here just kind of talking putting this camera on the tree and we noticed that there are tracks well kc knows there are tracks coming right under this camera and so we, we kind of take a little better look here. A lot of times in the south, you get tired of just kind of seeing mediocre sign and you get to the end of the day and the bugs are biting you and it's hot and snakes are out and you're like, I'm tired of this. Can we just hang this and, and call it good, you know? And luckily, KC's still observant. We figure out that deer kind of going down off from this road, they're kind of going down the edge of this creek right here. The creek kind of peters out up here. So we think what they're doing is they're coming off this ridge they're coming across the end of this creek right here. Same deal right here when they're coming through the road system. And they're working their way back down the edge of this creek, uh, which provides, um, because of the beavers, a lot of stump sprouts, like ash trees, a little bit of birch and stuff. And they're browsing all this stuff right here. Uh, we'll show you a little bit of that here in just a second. And then they're probably getting some drinks down here as well in the evening and going out here and partying and eating Forbes and stuff like that or whatever. So who knows exactly which way they're, they're going uh, as far as like bed to feed and all that. But we're going to find out because we're going to hang this exodus right here on a cam on a tree over here. And the good thing about this exodus is it's got a really good trigger. It's got a really good range as well. And so we're going to be able to pick up a lot of this right in here, I believe. I can see the tip top of your head. That's it? Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty high. Right there, I can see your feet. Oh, that's good. Is that about right? Yeah, I mean. I your head so. is in line with the trail out there. Yeah, oh yeah, that's good, dude. That spot? I think so. Yeah, I like having these screens, man. It makes it a lot easier. That's oh, for sure. For sure. that guy lefty or is he planning on deer walking the ridge or something maybe he stands up to shoot maybe but that's a big old branch to be standing up to shoot uh, telling the guy that lake whitney existed yeah i saw that missouri might be one of the buggiest places that i've ever been so other than that we had a few other takeaways that we wanted to go into casey hit us up there's a huge amount of land a huge amount of land mark twain is giant okay with it being giant, I think there's still going to be a lot of hunter pressure, mm -hmm. and there's no agriculture to speak of on any of that property. Yep. I think that you could focus on bedding islands, though. I think they looked legit. Um, also, white oak groves were a thing. They weren't just spread out all over the place. They were condensed groves. And also, there's a rifle season, and it's during a good part of November, so might be worth checking out. With that said, let's go into the elaboration or the explanation of our points. The huge amount of land, again. The huge amount of land again. Okay, so we have been a lot of places doing map scouting uh, with the map scout challenge stuff. And a lot of those places have a lot of land. Nothing like Missouri. This <laughs> is Western proportions. Oh my goodness, like this is a giant national forest. Mark Twain National Forest is three million plus acres of land mm. we're talking about like the southern half of missouri it seems like okay <laughs> maybe not that much but it is a big 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 spot in those three million acres uh there's a lot of river systems throughout and you're gonna find what i'm calling bedding islands we call them that when we were scouting as well they're not really islands like you would typically think of that would be out in a water body they're actually like humps in the landscape um so like for instance it's going to be down by the river and when the river floods and gets over its banks these are areas that the deer can rely on to be consistent bedding even when there's flooded uh, landscape around them essentially so I think that because of them being able to rely on that 
um, they just go ahead and bed there year round typically. We found a lot of beds. We found two dead fawns yeah. on, on that one island. And so I think that's a legit thing to be looking at when you go into scout. I think another reason they use those islands is because they get driven there by hunters. Yeah. And I think that it's just one of those little overlooked places that people don't really want to go bust up in and hunt because it's kind of small and hard to get to. But I do think that hunter pressure is going to be a big deal up there. We saw quite a bit of hunter sign, at least in the area we were in. Now, given we weren't like super far from a road way back in the wilderness area or anything, but we're a half mile from a road, we dropped a lot of elevation and we saw a couple different deer stands, blinds, uh, old metal chairs, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, for one thing, it's a place people have been using for many, many years. Mm -hmm. uh, and kind of the traditional use of that property is hunting, which is kind of cool. We actually talked to a local guy who pulled up while we were kind of fixing the head off in the woods and he started showing us pictures of deer and we got kind of fired up. So yeah. uh, people are at least actually having some success out there too. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the one guy we talked to was a hunter. So yeah. I think it's a part of the country where there's a lot of hunters too uh, that are gonna be local especially. Um, and then, you know, just naturally being that big, it's a big draw yeah. when out-of-staters come, they can find information on that place, mm -hmm. right? But that local guy that we talked to, one thing he talked about to us uh, as far as targeting deer were different things like saddles and white oak groves, which I yeah. mentioned earlier. And so I was like, well, what is a white oak grove? And he said, well, it's gonna be probably 10 trees or so in a spot. And so you find a saddle or a bench or just a, a gradual slope on the end of a ridge that's got a bunch, you know, like 10 white oaks or more. And we located a few of those spots and we tended to find rubs and mm -hmm. maybe even scrapes on near those white oaks. So I think that's something you could definitely look for and key in on when you're deer hunting around there. One of the reasons you gotta find those white oaks is because there ain't no ears of corn and there ain't no <laughs> delicious beans to be had in Missouri on this public land stuff. So a lot of the other states we go to, the government leases out you know, the, the farming rights to different agriculture plots that is on the property and Missouri doesn't have that. Like zilch, zero, at least any of the places that we went. There might be some elsewhere, I don't know. But from what we saw on the ground, there's no agriculture. So you gotta go in there and you gotta use your deer hunting knowledge whatever you got and to try to find deer doing what deer normally would do. Yeah, for sure. You got to really work on your woodsmanship, I think, up there. Um, you mentioned the delicious beans and you <laughs> actually know that they're delicious because he ate those in Kentucky. Uh, if you want to see him eat those, you can check that link out right there. Um, and we had a ton of fun on that trip with Anthony and Sean. What also would be fun is to take a rifle into the woods at Mark Twain because all that land gives you so much opportunity to just yeah. walk around all day, you know what I mean? And walking around doesn't necessarily lend itself to killing a deer with a bow, but if you got a rifle in your hand, especially a high powered rifle, you've got the opportunity to shoot deer in that late November period when it typically is open in Missouri through, you know, the, the leaves are gonna be down and you're gonna be able to see quite a way in those ridge systems. Just work through the saddles, uh, work through that terrain, work through the white oaks and, and all the different things that we've talked about here. And I think you're gonna stand a good chance of shooting a really nice buck up there during rifle season. Some people hate it. Some people see it as a very good opportunity. So uh, it depends on who you are when you're listening to this. But if you like to rifle hunt and you like to shoot deer, that's a good opportunity for you. So with that said, those are kind of our points. We're gonna go to the map session the map scouting portion of this and Casey's gonna show us some dots here. So one of the things that you're really gonna to have to consider whenever you are going to Missouri to hunt is that there is so much land. Look at all this stuff, dude. It is ginormous, all right? Mm -hmm. So it makes it a little bit tough to map, map scout because it's so overwhelming. Right, there's a ton of stuff to look at. Um, it shows you where all the hunters are, doesn't that's it? That's right, look at those guys walking in right there. <laughs> so, uh, we picked a spot and went there. Uh, it was really good. There's a lot of different stuff to look at, so let's kind of dive into it and see what was going on there. So the first thing that happened is uh, we're on public land here and we ran into that gate. So mm -hmm. that was really weird, but luckily we have the confidence in our Onyx map to know that we're still on public, even though there's a so-called private gate right here that really is uh, stealing your land from you. Mm -hmm. So uh, don't worry about that. All right, so we walked in, walked down these ridges, um, and our main goal was to make it out here to this bottom country down here. How uh, far is that from the truck? Um, from where we end up actually having to park the truck. It's gonna be Eight tenths eight of a tenths. mile. That's pretty, pretty far, especially when you're talking about losing that elevation right there. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty good haul. Yeah, it is. So, 
And that's not it. You can't walk that in a straight line distance either. You kind of got to twist and turn. And actually, we ended up down here and walked our way back up. We ended up on this clear cut right here, which mm -hmm. also, you mentioned that there is a rifle season there. Mm -hmm. A real good spot to be with a rifle that's somewhere true. on this clear cut, man. Um, but we started out down low down here and we walked this whole island, kind of the bedding island concept that Tyler was talking about. What drew, drew us to this point is that you notice there are trails going east and west to the river back to this island and then back up the ridge over here too. Now, something that we found out once we got down in here is there's a lot more water around than what you realize. So the deer are kind of funneled to do things. We started out here, made our way up this um, little island here. Here's the original map dot. Here's where we started finding deer beds. So I, good felt, job, sir. I felt pretty good, good about job, my map sir. scout in here. <laughs> uh, we did notice that there's you know major trails coming in right here. So that's kind of why we were wanting to end up there. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what this, oh, I marked a rug. Scrape. Scrape right yep. there. Yeah, marked a scrape there. So that was cool. We were gonna put a camera on that scrape. Yeah, we talked about coming back there. Yeah, that's we right. decided to, uh, we decided um, it was so far in there. It was so hot, it was getting late. Uh, we decided that would be a great place to have a camera that it just didn't work out for us this time around. Yeah, so we wanted to just hang one camera in this spot. So we worked our way up. We actually dinked around up in here quite a bit and everything looked okay. Mm -hmm. Like there was never something that was like, oh, this is dumb, mm -hmm. right? But uh, we weren't really finding what we wanted and we almost made it back. And then we ended up right here at this spot where this camera icon is. If you notice, there's a marsh right here. This actually is a pretty good looking creek mm -hmm. um, one year over you down there. And uh, there are beavers that are cutting down trees along that creek, mm -hmm. making those beaver mineral stumps. That's right. Gum it, how cool is that, man? Know. Um, we noticed that the first time we noticed that was here in Texas, actually. Yeah. Uh, and hunting some of the places we do here in Texas on public was that especially ash trees were getting cut down and deer love to browse ash trees. Love those sprouts off those ash trees. So we hung the camera there and then worked our way up right here. We did find a tree stand right in here somewhere. Yeah. So it is getting a little bit of pressure down there, but either way, hopefully that guy's a nice guy and he doesn't steal our exodus from us. Uh, mm -hmm. You found a bed right here that's on a white oak grove mm -hmm. right there. And then we worked our way out the ridge system back to the truck. Okay, now, what can we assess from that in finding a new spot on the map that we haven't been to? Um, really, it's kind of tough because there's not a lot of public land along the river per se right in this area. You can find stuff here and there and everywhere. But over here on this little creek, there is a spot. So this isn't like a the big river. This is South Fork Buffalo Creek. Probably a lot of sandy creek bed more than anything it looks like. You know, you can kind of barely see the creek flowing through there. But a lot of ridge system around, same kind of scenario. But there is a human clearing down here. Mm -hmm. um, I guarantee you there's a scrape on this tree somewhere. <laughs> Maybe it's all yeah, nighttime use. I don't know. But either way, it's same kind of deal where you got a riparian area and you've got a big mixture of terrain as opposed to the slightly monotonous big timbered areas up here. You got a north facing slope wall right here. You got a creek bottom here and then you've got broken stuff that it almost looks like the DNR might plant or do something mm -hmm. with. Cut hay or whatever. Either way, deer relate to open areas. They relate to edge. This is the most edge you're going to find up there in the big timber. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I like that spot. Um, and then I said, well, I got a wild hair. I'm just going to find something else that looks real good that I would like to check out sometime. So this is a, the Irish wilderness, mm. which I don't know if you can get away with labeling something Irish nowadays. <laughs> it's kind of sketchy. might get canceled. I don't know. Um, but, uh, either way, there's no roads in here. This isn't like capital wilderness, right? But this is a, uh, this is a big roadless area now. You definitely can always jump off in the big middle of this thing and go hunting, right? But when people see this wilderness, that's what they're going to want to do. They're going to hit these trails. They're going to go out here and find a spot. I like how the wilderness touches the highway right here, okay? Mm -hmm. And there's an entrance point here. People are going to be gunning for that, all right? There's some private land, maybe even some, dare I say, agriculture <laughs> on the private land right here. Mm -hmm. You know, who knows? It might be hay fields, whatever. This looks like a fallow field, which is pretty much a deer food spot. You know, mm -hmm. there's going to be all kinds of forbs and stuff in there. But I really like the idea of parking your truck right here along the highway 
and not a designated parking area, but still walking in right here. And this looks like what we like to refer to lovingly as a DMA, mm -hmm. like a deer movement area. If you notice, there's some decent ridges all around, and here's a decent sized bottom right here. Now, I didn't really pick this exact spot right there to hang the tree stand. I don't know for sure. It's pretty close to a creek right here. You can see you're on the south side of the creek. Mm -hmm. um, you can see the drainages are kind of coming down from the north there. But somewhere in here, mm -hmm. deer are going to get down in there and run around, move around, run around run as some of our around. friends talk about doing. It, and, it's going to be a scout your way in kind of possible yes, area there. You exactly. Know? And I yeah. think it's a like one of those little pockets. You like to talk about pockety deer. It's one of those places where you might find a pocket of whitetails right in here mm -hmm. that just really are undisturbed because people are either gunning for this deep stuff mm -hmm. or they're trying to find a place that's kind of close to a road that they can drive far in. Whereas right here, you're on a state highway jumping off and kind of ducking in behind some private land. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a really good looking spot, at least worth checking out and seeing what's in there. For sure, man. That's some creative stuff. I like it. I like it when you, I mean, you're good at this. You try to find places that that are not too far in there so that we can go in and hunt and get out if you need to you know if, if if it's not working out for you if the sign's not there and you bust it up in there in the morning and nothing's happening then you can get out and go somewhere else in the afternoon that's yeah. what I like about thanks man we kind of have the same uh, ideal ideology there so it's a good thing um, you know if you like this stuff Make sure and subscribe. Also, this video right here was from the same trip uh, where the next day we went to Illinois and did some stuff in Shawnee National Forest. Huge place, awesome country. There is some ag up there. I think there's gonna be some big deer and that kind of thing. And we're really just waiting to check out that camera at this point when we're recording this video. We're excited to see what's on that camera. So make sure and subscribe. Comment below if you have any thoughts about Mark Twain. If you ever hunted it, you wanna give some tips to somebody. And if you don't wanna give tips to somebody, you can lead them somewhere else. No, That's right. Do. Put some bad coordinates down there. Lead them to a good place. <laughs> Just don't lead them to somewhere you hunt, right? If you uh, think we're stupid and uh, these are bad, <laughs> also put that down there because yep. we want to know. Uh, like we're always trying to learn about this stuff. You know, part of the Map Scout Challenge is going and seeing new places and learning about it. And that's what we're gonna do with these trail cameras. We also would like to learn from y'all as well. For sure. Um, we've had a lot of fun with this series. Make sure and, su and support the companies that have supported us throughout this, ser this series as well. It's gonna be Onyx and, and Exodus. And remember, this is your element. Live in it. <laughs> <laughs>